in your natural flesh, you can't go past it. But to also say on the other hand, but in your spiritual, if you develop your spiritual senses, you can go through this veil and you can enter the next realms and go through these realms. And you can live in both worlds. That's the idea of the Gershonites. Next one is going to be the Marais. And the Marais are, are the masters of the framework. They carry the boards and the sockets of the whole structure. They, the things that, that, that uh, the foundations, the, the, the structure on which everything hangs. These are the mitzvot of Torah. The, uh, just a picture of those things is, is the, the commandments of Torah. This is what everything hangs on. This is what, the structure that everything's built around. And then to carry that, to carry the holy things, to develop and pursue the structures that actually give people access to the veils and give people access to the furnishings and the portals that establish our relationship and our communion with God. He's going to say, I want uh, you to, to, he's going to divide up and count the numbers of people between 30 and 50. All the other uh, parts of the, of the numbering that's taken place in the book of Numbers have been, uh, you know, a different age, above the age for war, 18 or 20, 20 years old, above 20 years old. But this is a special, for the special carriers of the glory, for those who carry unique aspects of the Kedusha of God. He says, I want you to, to have a training program. You will not be ready to do this until you're 30 years old. <laughs> you, you can be a, an apprentice. You can learn the process from a master. But until you're 30, we don't even count you in the process of the servant. You don't have the responsibility of carrying the holy things in this manner until you're 30. Then from 30 to 50, after 50, you, you will be uh, teaching others to do it. You'll be training others, perhaps, but you will not be physically doing this labor. This is for people within 30 and 50. And then he gives the, the numbers, the listings of how this will take place. There is so much here. The next thing he's going to do is... is Tell us that in all of our travels, in all of our dealings, our camp, where we interact with the Holy One is to remain pure, unadulterated, uncorrupted, and therefore if something unclean or profane enters it, we are responsible for removing it for diagnosing it, for detecting it, and for getting it out of the camp. We are to remove from the camp those things that carry this uncleanness and would pervert and corrupt us from actually releasing the Kedusha. You know, uh, the thing about Kedusha, holiness, is you can't let it get corrupted or it becomes toxic. It becomes, it becomes legalism or it becomes lawlessness. But one thing it does not is bring the he healing energy of the Holy One. It must be uncorrupted. So there will be three different aspects of things that will be, uh, will be asked to remove. And, and they are a focus largely upon what comes out of us, what starts coming out of us. You, you'll see uh, discharges and things like that, zuvim, uh, blood, blood out, outpourings of blood, outpourings of substances. Why does he give this, this image? I mean... Obviously, we're not going to go around inspecting each other's bodily parts or, or see what's emitted. What we're, what is, why is he telling us stuff like this? It's what comes out of you. It's what comes out of you that is, not, that is foreign to you. When you start regurgitating stuff that you've heard, some toxic things, sarcasm and, and accusations you've heard, when you start focusing on the, the, what comes out of you is the, what makes you unclean. Yeshua taught this very clearly in, in Matthew, in the book of Matthew, what comes out of you is what makes thing, you and other things unclean. So these, these emissions, these flashpoints, these eruptions, if anger comes out of you, what does it tell the world? Uh, the holiness has been contaminated. The contusion has been contaminated. If, if, uh, if profanity comes out of your mouth, if... Uh, disgust or arrogance comes out of your nature, out of your, out of your interactions. It tells the world something, and it should tell each, other, you, each of you that, that this is corrupted Kedusha. This, out of the same mouth, should not proceed blessing and cursing brethren. It, not ought, to, it ought not to be so. And so this is the challenge of, of that. And the next thing is that the third thing, uh, after the two types of discharges, the third thing is that we're to be on the watch out for is the, 
uh, Hebrew talks about the uh, uh, the tum- tuma of the of the uh, of the nephesh, the uncleanness of the soul. Now, a lot of times you'll read dead body, but nephesh is not a dead body. We talked about this many times in here. A nephesh is a living creature. So what's happening is, as we live in this world on the earth, as we let our mind think things. And as we let our will and our desires conjure up appetites and urges and flow with them, and as we begin to feel and let our bodies and our, our, our psyches feel emotions, moods, attitudes, as these things happen, toxicity enters into us. We go from the distraction level to the, uh, to the uh, enticement or seduction level and then to the explosion level and the obsession levels. And so if we start exploding with emotion, you know, some people say, I, I'm just an emotional person. Your flesh is an emotional person. Your flesh is an emotional person. Your flesh can be subjected to the authority of the Holy Spirit. You, you're, because the Holy Spirit is always in control. One of the fi- fruit of the Spirit is self Control, self-denial, and if that is not, if what you're talking about is your, uh, I'm very emotional, I'm very sentimental, I'm very, that's telling the world you are living in the flesh. Now that's all well and good unless you're of the kingdom of heaven, you're designed to be an ambassador and an emissary of the creator into every situation you face. It's all well and good unless you want to successfully navigate the challenges of your environment and of your interpersonal and interfamily and interethnic dramas. If you want to navigate those things, you're going to have to subject those emotions to the Holy Spirit. You're going to have to subject them. We are filled with the... This, we just came through Shavuot. just came through Pentecost. Last Mon- Sunday night to Monday, according to the traditional Hebrew calendar. So, in other words, we should be full of the Spirit of God right now. We should have been focusing on it for 49 straight days beforehand. Seeking to submit and surrender to his will. And by the time the day of the 50th day came, we should have been like bone coming to bone. Uh, flesh coming upon the, the, the bones and, and sinew and, and, and the breath entering into our lungs. We should be ready for this. But that means we have to say the flesh has to take a back seat. So, so we'll have this issue of learning how to push the unclean things and ourselves to step away, away from the, you know, the famous line in all the police dramas is, you know, step away from the car. Sometimes we have to step away from whatever we're saying, whatever controversy we're in, whatever discussion we're involved in, step